Hi folks, we're back into the history of revival and uh, we're beginning with starting with in this video with John Calvin. Through reading the Bible, John Calvin became a wholehearted follower of the Reformed faith and before long he was leader of the Protestants in Paris. In 1536 he published the Institutes of Christian Religion which was the first complete outline and vindication of Protestantism. Citizens of Geneva asked Calvin to come and help them in 1541 and for over 20 years he laboured to make Geneva a city of God. Attendance at public worship became compulsory, wearing gay clothes and dancing were were punishable offences and marriage was regularised and chastity was punished with death. The taverns and haunts of sin vanished. A good education became available to all. The churches were crowded and Geneva became a fountainhead of Protestant inspiration to all Europe. John Knox, the Scottish reformer, was a mighty man of prayer. Here in his example of how he prayed, O Lord, says John Knox, give me Scotland or I die. After a time, of stillness again, the cry, O Lord, give me Scotland or I die, once more deep silence, then again the cry with more intense pathos, O Lord, give me Scotland or I die. God gave him Scotland. If ever the man and the hour struck together, it was when John Knox landed in Scotland in 1559 and commenced his history-changing tour preaching root and branch reform. His trumpet-like call sounded over a mountain and moor, and within a few weeks, the chief centres of Scotland were won for the Protestant faith. This revival began in 1625 and continued for some years. Closely following was the revival at Kirk of Shots in June 1630. Here a large number of godly persons gathered for several days of prayer and conference. At least one whole night was spent in prayer. When John Livingston preached, about 500 persons were converted. Ulster Revival 1625. This remarkable revival was promoted by a band of faithful ministers. They went forth in companies to evangelize the land and God used them mightily. There was much prayer and faithful preaching in this revival. A contemporary, contemporary description of one of these ministers can be taken as typical of them all. He was a man of notable constitution, both of body and mind. Of a majestic, awful, yet affable and amiable countenance and carriage. Thoroughly learned and strong parts, deep invention, solid judgment and most public spirit for God. His gift of preaching was such that seldom could any observe with the withdrawing of assistance in public, which in others is frequent. He spent many days and nights in prayer alone and with others and, others, and was vouchsafed great intimacy with God. Here is a short description of those happy days. Preaching and praying was so pleasant and here is so eager and greedy that no day was long enough nor any room large enough to answer the strong desires and large expectations. So this was the Ulster Revival in 1625. Wow. German Pietism. In 1660 this movement began in the Lutheran Church under the ministry of Spencer. He was moved to oppose the dead orthodoxy that was prevalent in many of the churches and to work for revival of true religion. The pietists sought to promote Bible study and the development of a lay ministry and practical Christian living. They believed that a blameless life should be indispensable qualification for the ministry and that preaching should be simple and direct. Riggensbach says in, these, in, in less than half a century pietism spread its influence through all the spheres of life and through all classes of society. Spencer and Frank also had an active part in the founding of the Danish Hall Mission and in the training of church men as Count Zidendorf and the missionaries Ziegenblag and Schwartz. So we're going to go into another couple of videos now. God bless you.